Vice Chancellor, colleagues, graduates, parents. I was wondering why the VC invited me as a heart surgeon and a foreigner to address this congregation. Perhaps because I have loved this country for over 25 years with all the challenges. Perhaps because someone coming from outside may appreciate things which locals don't see anymore. Having grown up outside the English-speaking world, many of the traditions are unfamiliar to me. Yet today's culmination of years of education is a highlight in life which we share all over the world. It makes you a member of the perhaps most noble fraternity, the highest educated echelon in the social fabric of this world. As you are aware, it comes with privileges and responsibilities. One of the privileges is that higher education gives us the tools to be curious with purpose. Let me elaborate on that. The wonderful curiosity of a child with all its questions for the parents often got gradually lost by the enormous pressure the years of education have put on you since starting primary school. Now society needs you to go out and ask questions again, often uncomfortable questions. Higher education also means that you have learned to formulate the questions the right questions, and to ask where do they fit in into what society needs. On the other hand, if you rediscover the burning curiosity of a child and put it into the idealism of your youth, you will never be endangered to once at the end of your professional life retire, and be disappointed with yourself. Higher education, of course, also prepares you for leadership. But leadership doesn't mean managing. Again, it obliged you to ongoing curiosity again, exploring the uncharted, finding creative solutions, be it as a lawyer, improving justice, or being as a medical doctor, improving access to medicine. Perhaps the reason the vice chancellor asked a heart surgeon to speak, who spent the whole professional career in academia, is because lived curiosity may seem more tangible when it comes to saving lives. Higher education also confronts us with the question of purpose, of what we do. You would, of course, not be here today if you hadn't learned to relinquish instant gratification for long-term purpose and all the sacrifices of yourself and your families are testimony to this. Having grown up in Vienna, a hero of my life was Viktor Frankl. He was a disciple of Sigmund Freud. His mantra was the famous Frankl Triangle, stating that the detour through purpose is faster and more successful than the direct route towards a goal. But today is not a day for preaching virtues to you. You have deserved a lighter glance into your future. So let me reassure you, 
curiosity and purpose will make your postgraduate life colorful and never boring. You will also see how little temptation there is for pursuit of material gains beyond what we really need if you allow the curiosity you had as a child to become a governing principle in your life. I'd like to give you two personal examples from 40 years of my own postgraduate career to show you how rewarding this approach is and how it makes you immune against the doom and gloom that may come with the inevitable disappointment if postgraduate expectations were only material. Of course, no other environment allows you to pursue curiosity with purpose as much as an academic career. Remaining in the fold of a university beyond graduation day for life. Here in Cape Town, you are at the cradle of heart surgery. In heart surgery, life-saving operation emerged in the 60s and 70s, which amongst other things, allowed to replace diseased heart valves or clogged up arteries with prosthesis. These non-living replacement parts often failed because nothing can replace the sophisticated function of our living organs. As excited and as exciting as heart surgery was, the burning question as to how one could improve these failing implants drove me very early to find money for starting a research lab right next to the ward with the patients. And we found the money. And we pioneered something, as you heard, which is called today tissue engineering, practically regrowing new arteries, new heart valves from the patient's own tissue. Hundreds of patients were saved. But what I want to share with you is that the world looked at us and the excitement we felt for the fruits of our curiosity by far outweighed the fact that materially, had we gone into private practice, we could all have earned 10 times more. My second example for walking the path of curiosity is from South Africa. When I took up the famous Chris Barnard chair here in Cape Town, our team realized that I must say we as surgeons were slower. There are pioneers of medicine in this room who have known that much longer than us. But we realized that the forgotten heart disease of rheumatic heart disease is crippling a continent at the scale of HIV without the world noticing. Hundreds of thousands of patients die each year because they have no access to the life-saving heart surgery. Our enthusiasm to find a solution convinced other South Africans to fund our search for a heart valve for Africa that does not need open heart surgery. In two months from now, the first patient will receive such a valve after exciting 10 years of development. These are just two examples for, for the fulfillment a postgraduate life can give you if you use the tools you received during your education to revive the curiosity you had as a child and combine it with the purpose of our responsibility towards society. You are the leaders of tomorrow. Challenging circumstances 
can only break your spirit if you stop asking questions and if you stop believing that you can come up with creative answers and change the world, even in small increments which one single life allows. With this encouragement, I congratulate you to the biggest achievement so far in your life, but celebrate it in the knowledge that it doesn't only give you an open door to good jobs, but it also gave you the tools to maintain joy and purpose in your lives. Thank you very much. Thank you.